As with many businesses and government agencies, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the operations of the Social Security Administration. We want to take some time to provide you with the information related to applying for Social Security disability benefits during the pandemic. When you apply for benefits, you will need several documents such as your Social Security card and birth certificate. This is a list of some of the documents you may need. There are no fees or costs to apply for Social Security. You can file in person, but not during COVID-19. You can file by phone or online. When you apply, you need to be prepared with the date you stopped working, also known as your onset date which is the date when your disability made it impossible for you to work, along with one to three diagnoses. There are notable differences between Supplemental Security Income, SSI, and Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI. Here are a few differences. There are strict income and resource limits which apply to supplemental security income. The specific numbers are included in this slide. Here is some general advice we sometimes give our clients. This advice is designed to guide our clients through the disability benefit application process. This first statement involves financial requirements and focuses on the difference between SSI and SSDI. It also covers what is countable income and what the resource limits are. Here is a summary of how Social Security defines a disability. They have strict requirements that include having a medical diagnosis that would prevent you from doing the easiest job in the national economy. There is a much stricter standard for those under 50 years old, as those claimants are considered to be younger individuals by Social Security. This definition requires the claimant prove that he or she cannot perform even sit-down or sedentary work. Social Security does not consider irrelevant factors, including non-medical issues, when determining eligibility for benefits. This slide highlights the importance of medical records and other evidence in your case. It also emphasizes the doctor who submits an opinion can significantly strengthen your case. In the upcoming section of the presentation, we will give you some ideas of what can be considered evidence in your case. You should consider collecting statements or third party function reports from anyone you interact with in your life on a regular basis who may have noticed how your disability limits you at work, at home, or in any organization you might participate in. This form helps Social Security determine if you can complete tasks on time, remember and understand written or oral instructions, and other criteria when taking your mental disability into consideration. This is a mental health doctor's opinion. This form helps Social Security assess your physical and mental limitations in the workforce caused by your disabling condition. It will evaluate your ability to lift weight, walk, sit, and other various limitations. The third party function report. This form would be completed by someone you interact with on a regular basis and could make statements describing how your limitations affect your daily life. Here are some additional videos we received permission to share.
something to consider, create a My Social Security account. Consider signing up for a My Social Security account online. You can check the status of your application after it is submitted and many other helpful resources would be available to you.